All right, here we are. Well, welcome everyone. This is our series, uh, Wednesday Wisdom series, where we go over tips, tricks, and techniques for the band repair trade. Uh, today we've got Leroy, and Leroy is our resident clarinet guru, and Leroy is going to go over how to measure clarinet pad cups accurately. So we'll talk about measuring pad cups, uh, how to, the tools you need, how to recognize some problems, and then we'll also give you a bonus tip on how to install them with uh, glue. So stick around for that and see what type of glue Leroy uses. All right, Leroy, would you like to start with what type of tool and conditions we're going to start with when we're replacing a pad? Absolutely. The most important tool you're going to want is a digital caliper. Um, as you can see on this one, it go, has metric, it has standard. Uh, the easiest for me it to, uh, is to do the, um, the metric measurement because most pads and pad cups, most measurements will go through the metric system. Um, when we're measuring the pad cup, I'm going to kind of show you this here. If you look, the pad itself is actually on the same plane as the pad cup. Most of, and, that's, and because of that, the reason that is, is this right here. If you can see it, there is a little step. And I'll put my finger there so you can see it better. There's a little step on the pad. So on the, on the top side here, there's a cardboard back. And then on, on this side here, there's the felt. And then in between there, there's a step. And that step goes actually inside of the pad cup. And that's why this edge, this edge here, is on the same plane as the edge of the outside edge of the pad cup. And so what you're looking for is, in general, you're looking for a pad that's going to be, uh, you're looking for a, a pad that sits right on the edge of the pad cup rim, not too far over and not too far in. Is that right? Correct. Yep. And you want to make sure that it actually goes in, goes actually inside of that pad cup, not, not cattywampus, not overly inside, but so the actual rim, like Rich said, rests on the outside of that pad cup itself. So I'm going to show you how those actually fit in there. So as you can see, Real quick, this pad is a little torn up. If something looks like that, that definitely needs to be ripped out and replaced. So I'm going to use my little heat torch here. So you're using the Vortex Air Torch. I am. That's something that we have. It's a hot air gun that is got a bunch of different controls in terms of how hot it can get and the airflow and all that. And so you can heat up a pad cup that way. They could also use a gas torch too, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. this um, the air torch. I, I like it because it's very. It, uh, if, you, if you're doing stuff with saxophone, it won't burn lacquer. If you're doing something on clarinet, it helps not mess up the body, especially if it's a plastic clarinet. Um, plastic clarinets will the bodies will end up burning or putting like a little bit of a bubble sensation around that area if it heats up too well. So there, I got the pad out, but you can also see there's a little excess glue in there, right? So in order to get a good measurement and to get a good clean surface, I usually just take a, an old messed up screwdriver, clean that out of there as best I can. Hopefully it won't stick to my hand. And now do you ever use like a rag or anything to wipe the excess glue out as well or? Um, you can. Um, there is, I'll say there's no right or wrong way to take the glue out of there, just as long as the glue does get out. Um, I like using something metal like this uh, for a couple reasons. It helps, it's a, it's a nice rigid tool to get the glue out. At the same time, it also prepares the back of the pad cup to have good glue adhesion. Because if, if, if it's too smooth or, or glossy, it actually won't stick to the pad cup as well as if it adds like a little bit of texture to it. You don't want to put super big grooves in there, but just enough where it actually will, will catch on. Okay, so this awesome. is, that's the old pad. We took that out of there. That's going to go away. Now, so the pad cup itself, we have our digital caliper. We'll go here and we're going to measure it. So 15, 15, 9. It's about as, six, it's about as close to a 16 as I can think of, unless it's actual 16, right? Mm-hmm. So, and just to make sure the pad cup is round and not out of, out, of, out of whack, you can either do a little turning action like I got, or you can do a north-south, east-west action. 
just to make sure that the numbers that you're measuring inside that pad cup are either the exact same or very, very close. So you can see that we're, it was, it was more around that area. So that's about a 16, right? So what you want to want to do to make sure that the pad actually fits in the pad cup, pad cup. Because remember we were talking about the little ridge. This is where, this is where this big number and doing a little bit of math come into play. So if I measure the front part, that number for this particular pad is a 17, right? But here's the cool part. I'm gonna go on the back and measure the back side and make sure I'm actually on the ridge and it's measuring right around a 15.92. So those aren't the same and that's exactly why there's the ridge there. And this particular size actually, I got lucky when I picked this one, is this is the size that will actually go inside of this pad cup. Pad cup measured 16, the back ridge measured 16, you go put it in there and then boom you can see that it lines up perfectly well with the edge of the pad cup and it looks great so yeah. as as a general rule when mm -hmm. they're at home and, and maybe this is a novice watching this they're going to measure the inside of the pad cup correct and then well the pad that they would need to order is bigger than that diameter so what's the general number that they would need to the math what's the general number they need to add to the inner diameter of the cup Normally, the, uh, traditionally, the easiest way to figure it out without going too far into everything is one millimeter. So as you saw, as you saw with this pad that I just measured, the outside of it, the bigger part, oops, I'm squishing it a little bit, is right around a 17. I flip it around and measure the inside step. And I'm off of it a little bit. And it's pretty much a 16. So this is the, I'll say this is the math part of when you're ordering traditional felt pads that have the step on it, you're going to want to order the size that's on the outside, the bigger size. So when I made it, again, this is the same pad. So when I measured it and it measured, oops, I'm squishing it again. When I measured about a 17, you're going to want to order a 17 because the back side will be about 16. So say they have their clarinet and they've They've taken the keys off. They, they removed the old pad. Can they measure the old pad as a reference? Um, they can. Uh, the only thing that might be difficult about that, especially if you're doing like a thickness thing, mm -hmm. is um, depending on how long the pad is in there or the felt, uh, they can get waterlogged. So if you look mm. at this, see how, see how that's nice and flat? Um, I don't have a bad pad in here to show as an example, unfortunately, but... Um, many times if a pad's been in there for a long time or the, if the person's like a really uh, play, been playing on it for a long time, there'll actually be a little belly on this side of the pad. So like the pad that actually touches the body, hmm. there'll be something they call a belly. And that would possibly mess up the measurement because it also might pull your pad in too. So it actually may not be the correct diameter as well. Okay, so belly pads are a thing I've never heard of, but belly pads not accurate to measure right so if you have belly pads you need to get better pads apparently yep you can throw those away and get better ones. okay so just to summarize if they're going to for a traditional felt pad like we've been showing you here measure the inner diameter of the pad cup yep. measure it on two different sides and then whatever that inner diameter is in millimeters add one millimeter and that would be the pad that you would order correct cool well let's that's great Leroy let's also go over a cork pad Okay. If we could. Yeah, of course. Um, I have a smaller cork. I have a smaller pad for the cork. But if you look at this pad here, I'm going to kind of pull this off to the side so you can kind of see it a little bit. Or put my finger behind it so you can kind of see the... This is very cylindrical. There's no step. There's no extra, extra stuff on this one. It's just a cylindrical pad. So this one, you would basically... Again, this is small. You would... If, if, when you're measuring the pad cup, you would want to take the number from the pad cup that you measured. So if we're, if we're going to do this one again, this one measured a 16, you would order a 16 cork pad. This also translates to, to um, traditional leather pads too. There's no step. They're just a straight up punch or a cylindrical circle. So 
measure 16, you would order a 16 leather pad. Oh, okay. So that's, that's actually a little easier, less math. Yeah. I like that. Okay, cool. Well, that leads me to a couple of questions, uh, Leroy, just before we get to our bonus tip sure. of installing the pads with glue. Um, this is just a super general one, but I see it all the time here. Do, do they have to take the keys off to measure? It is, it is the easiest and best way to do it. You like, from my experience with it, all this, to try to get, if this is on the instrument like this, to try to get this in here, and to have it be accurate on the body is near impossible. And the amount of time it actually takes to take this, to take one of the pads, or sorry, the keys off to actually measure it is just a matter of like maybe a few seconds. So it's not a, a horrible time waster to take it off. And it's actually in the long run gonna save you time by trying to guess what pad size it actually might be. Okay, cool. Well, I have a couple other questions, but I know they're, they're going to relate to the bonus tip, which is what, how much glue to use when you're installing a traditional pad. Can we go over that? Yeah, of course. So we're going to use the same one we've been doing here for as an example. Um, I personally like to, when doing, when doing any standard clarinet work, I like to use these glue pellets. Um, they're awesome. It's a very, very easy way to make sure that you're using an accurate amount of glue for putting in certain uh, certain size pads when you're doing anything on clarinet. So because I have nice fat fingers, I like to use a little tweezer. It makes me feel like I'm doing surgery a little bit, but it also, again, makes, makes it so what I'm putting in there is accurate. And for this size of a pad cup, depending on how deep the pad cup is and Slight, slightly varying sizes within this area. I'll do anywhere between like 10 and 14 pellets. Sorry, now I'm having to count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm gonna do one more. So if you see, what I'm basically trying to do is cover, almost completely cover that pad cup. I might just do one more on that side. Just, was, for, just for good measure. Yeah, I was going to say, as a general rule, is it just kind of trying to cover the, the base of the pad cup? Right. And the reason is, and it's, and it's really important, especially on cl um, clarinet pad cups, is that unlike saxophone, um, the, the inside of saxophone pad cups are usually pretty flat. Clarinet pad cups will have a little concave action in there. So the glue will actually go to that, go to that area and like well into it. So you want to make sure that you have enough glue that the well fills up and the glue, the pad when you're putting it in there will actually adhere to the glue on the, I'll say the edges and the corner of the pad cup as well as the center. So there has to be enough glue to raise up from the center. And then here's another cool little, I'll say bonus tip that we're going to go with is whether you use uh, an air torch or a standard torch, um, when the heat goes on, onto this thing to heat them up. The glue pellets are super, super light. So in, instead of having the, the flame or the heat go right on the, the glue pellets themselves, that actually might blow them out, out of the pad cup. What I like to do is I'll, I'll use the air torch for this example, is I'll get this as close as I can, is I'll heat this up and it may be a little hard to see, but as it heats up a little bit, the, the glue pellets, they'll start to get a little bit shiny. Once that happens, they're kind of in that nice little melty state. And at that point, they're stuck to the pad cup a little bit enough where if I go on the top side here, they won't blow away. And then from here, just make sure that the glue gets a little melty. And then once it gets a little melty, and again, this is all a visual thing. There's no, you could probably time it, but it's a lot easier just to see and look at it. So I'll put the pad in there. I'll do a little twist push and twist just to make sure the glue is distributed evenly throughout that pad cup and if you look real carefully same it's got the same protrusion as the one we took out it's lined up with the outside of the pad cup and from here at this point you would basically put it back on the body uh, use a feeler gauge and uh, if it's either hitting one side or the other you would heat it up move it around to make sure that the feeler gauge catches evenly all the way around the pad. 
And if you want to take it a step further, you can get um, a leak tester with some plugs and make sure all the pads are sealing in that direction as well. Awesome, Leroy. Thank you for that. Um, I think that is, let me just make sure I got everything going over here. Um, I think that's going to do it for us for right now. I'm having trouble getting back to my other screen. So uh, thank you all for watching on this. Uh, to, this has been the conclusion of our Wednesday Wisdom, where we go over tips, tricks, and uh, techniques in the band repair trade. On Friday, hey, there we go. On Friday, we're going to, uh, my my silly, like, track pad. Died. Man, i got to get this thing charged up. That's uh, all right. we got it covered. So we're going to do, uh, on Friday, uh, we're going to go over how to install a bass clarinet pad with glue. We're going to talk a little bit more of adhesives, and we're going to do a wide range of clarinet pad review uh, that we have here at Music Medic, including a couple uh, new pads that yes. we're going to be coming out in the coming months with. Um, so that's going to be exciting. Uh, if you guys like this video uh, series, feel free to share and subscribe, especially if I can get my trackpad working. Um, <laughs> But that's going to do it for us today, and until next time, happy, happy repairing. repairing.